Hey everyone, um, it's Matthew here. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video talking about my animation, and that's because I've not really had a chance to work on it for a few weeks, um, and so I thought I would um, tell you about what's been going on, um, things that have uh, kind of got in the way of me working on the film. Um, and then after that I can show you what I've been doing this week. Now I'm I'm back um, into working on it again. So, um, first, my garden got destroyed. So you might think I'm sitting in a building site, but um, this is how I actually discovered my garden a few days ago. Um, the council asked the people that we rent the property from if they could fix a broken wall that was overhanging the pavement. And instead, the builder uh, just smashed up the wall and dumped it into the garden. Um, under here are all the bulbs that I planted for next spring, and um, my collection of rare ferns. Um, and so, I imagine they're all dead. And I don't really have a garden anymore, um, but also, I don't have any gardening tools because without a wall to the garden um, someone came in and stole all my gardening tools, my equipment. That's why we've had to put up this fence. And um, so I haven't really got much work done this week. And then after that happened I was working on the Little Match Girl Prussian for Opera North. Um, some of you might have seen the videos I was making where I showed you some of the work from that. Um, some of you might have even come to have seen the show. And um, for those of you who maybe didn't get to see the show, um, I thought I would read you what some of the critics thought about it. Um, this is from uh, something called uh, Bark. Bark, bark track, back, back track, bark track, like the guy. Uh, and they say, musically, the performance was exemplary, as should be expected of Ife Giolini. The text was conveyed with real clarity, even in this church's sometimes tricky acoustic. And the singers were just as comfortable in the plainer narrative sections as in the slightly more musically involved responses. They even occasionally indulged in some tasteful vibrato. Robin's intricate puppet work, though, didn't win me over. The visuals, hence, didn't add to the words and music so much as take away from them. And what appeared to be the occasional technical slip as well only compounded the impression that Addison's simple tale had been given only a simplistic telling. Daily Telegraph. Then came Lang's Passion where the voices were joined by tiny silvery sounds of glockenspiel and tubular bells and the occasional muffled thud from a bass drum, all played by the singers themselves. The singers' concentration and attention to detail was moving in itself. But the accompanying puppet show projected on a screen, with its stick figures, moving through indifferent skyscrapers, seemed too folky and childlike for the ritualistic severity of Lang's music. Not even the intensity of the performance could save it from appearing threadbare. Guardian came to see it. It can be a wonderfully direct, achingly powerful piece, and Fagiolini sang it with all their familiar, unfussy mastery. Unfortunately, though, the performance gained little from being accompanied by Robbins's puppet imagery, which seemed only intermittently connected with the narrative, and whose rough edge style didn't chime at all with the very polished formalism of Lang's setting. The images were more distracting than evocative, and the performance might have been more effective without them, and with the lights up. Uh, let me see. Wall Street Journal. Never again will you see such visually poetic, technically self-assured craftsmanship as is on near continuous display in this large cast stage version of Michael Morpurgo's 1982 Oh, this is for Warhorse actually. Mm. Um, so that um, occupied me for a few weeks. 
and um, now back into um, working on Peter Lilly in the Nose. And I thought it'd be a good chance to um, talk about some of the inspirations in my work um, because um, Peter, to try and, and sort of win the affection of this girl, made her um, a gift. I suppose this is kind of like the sort of thing I do for people. I want them to like me. And um, I kind of wanted him to make something mechanical, uh, like a big um, automata, like a big machine that would um, look really nice as a, as a sort of piece of animation um, with lots of moving parts and, and cogs and things like that. And one of the artists that I'm very inspired by is Paul Spooner. For example, here is one of his pieces, which is sort of based on uh, Victorian models of butcher shops. And so I tried to come up with something that Peter would make for Lily that was kind of um, based on this idea, some sort of huge machine. And I know for the last few years, as I've got to know Paul, um, I was thinking about the stuff he makes for people that he knows, like when they're gifts and everything like that. And they're always much smaller, they're not big ostentatious pieces. You know, they're much more sort of in intimate. Um, for example, I've been lucky enough to have been given a couple for this little model of Proust. Here's like this little see on a toaster. And I thought, oh yeah, like Peter should make something really small and and I intimate to try and impress Lily, not not freak her out with some massive machine. She rides a motorbike. And so I thought oh, I could make a little model of her on the motorbike and he would be riding it with her and they'd be looking happy. Well, I'll show you. There's Peter, here's Lily, his little table. Basically, um, the rest of it I'll build up with other layers so that you'll see the chairs and the wallpaper, table legs, I'm uh, making that with chalk drawings. Uh, and the way I'm animating this little clockwork bike um, is with a kind of uh, replacement style, you know, instead of like moving the joints and taking a shot like this for example each piece has the movement uh, built into it so I've cut it out seven times they're all basically the same but obviously there'll be little um, minor differences between each one that you'll, you'll see on screen it's important that it looks like it's really working I want the clockwork key to be exactly the right place so as it turns you really get the feeling that this that this key is moving, but I wanted the actual um, little bike to be quite to, to have the impression that it's very homemade and hopefully give it some sort of charm on behalf of Peter. Um, and so the idea is, um, it rides around the table like this, and I'll take a shot and then replace it. Take another shot, place it with the next one. And keep doing this. Table. And then, if it's right, we get the illusion of movement. Um, so thanks for watching this week. Um, if you've got this far, and this has been quite a long film and uh, a bit unfocused, but. Um, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, and uh, I'll see you soon, bye.